In this podcast, what we're going to be looking at is the different features that we see on the moon, uh, how they formed, and what the backside of the uh, moon looks like, and explain any differences that there are. So, first off, let's go ahead and take a look at the moon. All right, so here's the moon in its full moon phase. And the first thing that you should uh, notice are there are a bunch of little holes, all right, or little craters. That's the first thing that jumps out at you, all right. These craters, all right, formed mostly early on in uh, the moon's history uh, during the heavy bombardment period. But it's continually bombarded uh, today and as, as things rain down on it, all right. And that's how these things form. It's just a uh, space debris slams into the crust and makes a big hole, just like we see here on Earth uh, in Meteor Crater and, and so forth. All right. Another thing that you should notice is that the moon is predominantly two shades. All right. You've got this lighter uh, shade of gray, and you've got these darker regions up here. All right. These are the two main parts of the moon. All right. These are called the highlands. The highlands are the lighter colors. And they're old uh, uh, and made predominantly of a mineral that should sound familiar, plagioclase feldspar. All right, that's important to know. These are very old, all right, uh, and made out of that plagioclase. Whereas these, these is known as maria, all right. Maria are actually, uh, I believe, Italian for seas. They have maria tranquillus, all right which um, is known as the Sea of Tranquility. You have the Sea of Storms, you have uh, different things, because when people first saw these, they thought that, uh, like the Earth, the moon might have continents and oceans, and that these dark regions might be uh, the oceans and the seas, and these uh, other regions, the highlands, aren't, uh, would be the continents where you could find cities and people where they live. All right, that was the original thought. So you've got the highlands, you get the Maria. Now, why are they different colors? Marias tend to be darker. All right, these are basaltic uh, in nature. All right, that's their composition. And you should uh, also uh, uh, know that term from uh, the geology you have this class. Basaltic rocks form volcanically. All right, these are uh, large impact craters. All right, so they form just like normal uh, craters. But in fact, early on uh, the moon's history, when it was uh, still young and still had a, uh, a warm gooey center all right large enough impacts were able to actually break through the crust into that mantle and the mantle uh, material then welled up uh, which was rich in iron uh, basaltic lava and cooled and hardened forming the the maria now let's take a little bit closer look at some of these uh, craters all right bright one here is known as tycho and if you look closely what you can see here that uh, there are these rays right, emanating away from uh, these craters. All right, these rays are basically ejecta. All right, ejecta is uh, just debris flown out of, uh, thrown out of the crater during an impact. And since it's uh, a little bit newer and hasn't been exposed to the sun's ultraviolet rays, uh, it hasn't grayed as much. That's why they stand all a bit more. Right. Young craters tend to have these rays that emanate away from them. Over time, though, these rays will uh, fade as the UV rays uh, interact with that rock. Now, as this ejecta all right, uh, covers out the, uh, the, the surface, it's known as regolith. Regolith is basically just a bunch of uh, dust, ejecta, that covers the, uh, the, the, the surface of the moon. Now... There's one other uh, feature that you need to know called rills. And rills show up only in the Maria. They don't show up on the highlands uh, because of how these things form. Again, these are volcanic in nature, in their origins, uh, because when those large impacts hit the crust, they actually got into the crust, into the mantle, and that mantle material, the basaltic magma, rose up and cooled and hardened. Now, while that was happening, all right, these rills, let's zoom in here, kind of look like valleys. What these rills are, all right, they kind of look like valleys. What they are are really magma tubes that have been collapsed. Uh, 
as this stuff cooled and hardened, magma still uh, flowed underneath them, uh, kind of like uh, what we have in Hawaii, actually. Magma runs uh, out and away from volcanoes uh, through these uh, magma tubes, and eventually the magma uh, sinks down into the earth, uh, leaving uh, a, a, basically a big cave, and eventually that cave uh, will collapse, leaving these rills. All right. So you got the highlands, which are the heavily cratered old uh, uh, rock that are the lighter gray made out of plagioclase feldspar. Then you have the younger uh, maria, which uh, are basaltic in nature. You have craters, you have rills, and you have ejecta and regolith, and you also have rays. Now, a couple things here before we take a peek at the backside. Looking at the moon, you'd think that it has been hit a lot more than the Earth. Well, that's not true. In fact, Earth uh, was hit just as much early on and still hit as much as the moon. So why then does the moon look so much more cratered? The reason for that is because that there is no atmosphere on the moon. All right, the fact that there's no atmosphere means there is absolutely no erosion. All right. There's no atmosphere, there's no water, there's no runoff to erode away the material. There's very low gravity, um, there's no glaciers, so there's really no erosion. That's one of the main things uh, that uh, is in effect because there's no atmosphere on the moon. Also, if you go there, obviously you can't breathe. Uh, a neat thing uh, to do on the moon is to look at the pictures. All right. All right. The sky is always black. doesn't mean there's not any stars, it's just that it's black. Uh, just like a night sky here. The reason why we have a blue sky during the day is because we have an atmosphere. All right. <clears throat> also, there's nothing there to protect you from uh, impacts. If you ever seen a shooting star, what you're seeing is actually our atmosphere burning up material uh, as it's falling into the atmosphere. On the moon, you don't have that. All right. Uh, also, on the moon, there are these huge temperature swings. If you're in the daylight, the sun is beating down on you and it is a scorching 260 degrees Fahrenheit in, uh, in, in the, uh, the light. When the sun sets and it's dark, the temperatures plummet to minus 280 degrees Fahrenheit. That's over a 500 degree difference there uh, between the light and the dark. Uh, our atmosphere allows us to moderate our temperatures. All right. And again, there's no erosion. That's why uh, those craters will stay there uh, and any footprints. Okay, so we've been through the moon's features. Now, we only see one side of the moon, which is interesting. We'll get to why later. So we never actually saw the back side of the moon until much later on. So we sent space probes around it, and you wouldn't think there'd be that much of a difference. Let's take a look. All right, when we take a look at the far side of the moon, it is heavily cratered, but one thing that you should notice that is missing here are the maria. All right, there is a maria here, and there's a dark patch kind of over in this area, but it's mostly highlands. There are very, very few, if any, of the maria. And the question is why? Why would the far side of the moon not uh, have as many uh, maria, if, if any at all? To try to explain why there is no Maria on the far side, we have to look at a, a diagram of the, of the moon. All right, if we take a look at the moon, all right, we can see here this side always faces the Earth. We have the Mari, uh, and what you should notice is that the crust on this side is much thinner than it is on this side. All right, to explain this, all right, since the moon moves in such a way that it's always facing um, the Earth, at least this side is always facing the Earth, that actually took all the layers and shifted them a little bit towards the Earth. The core got moved a little bit, the outer mantle, uh, the, uh, the lower mantle, all right, which in the end causes the side that's away from the moon to be thicker. So an impact that caused a Mari on this side would have to go much, much deeper into the crust to actually get to the mantle and cause that mantle material to rise up and fill in making a Mari. So the basic explanation is that the far side of the moon is much thicker uh, crust-wise. 